Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I am going to read more of this book, uh, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. How do you like my uh, protest sign up? Many of you have seen that protest sign when I was outside, protesting outside the EPA. I got a little art lesson from Ackerman. I sort of improved it. If you saw the um, video, you can see that I added extra bananas and made sure it looks like an equal sign, does not equal sign. You know, this, this is the symbol, for those of you that aren't familiar with math, this symbol means does not equal. Whenever you have an equal sign with a slash through it, it means does not equal. So, bananas do not equal radiation. Because the fucking scientists, evidently, they need some basic math questions. <laughs> As we're going to find out, and we are now on what page now? Page 85, um, Chapter 5, Lip Service to the Public Health, and I'm going to pick up where I left off. What Professor Teller is telling us is that we must explode enough of these peaceful nuclear bombs and thereby spew radioactivity into the biosphere in order to find out the possible benefits. The general plowshare philosophy is that nuclear bombs must be good for something. So that's our first paragraph into this little chapter, this little reading here. Let me read this again. That is, I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. That is unbelievable. What Professor Teller is telling us is that we must explode enough, quote, peaceful, unquote, nuclear bombs, and thereby spew radioactivity into the biosphere in order to find out the possible benefits. The general plowshare philosophy is that nuclear bombs must be good for something. Professor Teller's last recommendation in the letter to Senator Gravel is remarkable. He is speaking about doses of, point, of 0 0.17 rads which with, uh, the amount which goes with 32 extra thousand cancers per year for the United States. His recommendations are as follows. When the effect of released radiation reaches at any instant the average, that is, when the effect of the United States average is doubled in any human organ, or when there is enough fallout to threaten such a concentration in a human organ. Protective measures should be taken at the expense of the parties responsible for the radioactive contamination. Oh, really? Hello, General Electric and TEPCO. These protective measures may consist in the removal of some radioactivity from the affected people. In case of tritium contamination, methods for doing this are available. In case of strontium or iodine, there are methods to accelerate elimination. With more research and development, these methods can be probably improved. In, ca in other cases, contaminated materials could be removed from the food chain. These protective measures shall proceed promptly whenever the affected people request it. Really? All we have to do is ask to have you clean up our food supply. It should be realized that at present, protective measures are only partially effective. In the important case of tritium, they are quite effective. By making them available, one can greatly reduce needless worry. Thus, in the long run, one can hope to hold actual damage to a, to a minimum, even in the case where releases exceeding the national average has taken place. In this way, it can be made clear that the result of inadvertent release will become primarily an inconvenience to the affected people. It is improper to concentrate on the frightening aspects of improbable fatalities when there are good prospects that methods for preventing such fatalities can be developed. That's the end of his, his, his statement. 
Few readers will believe their eyes on reading what Professor Teller recommends for their future. We certainly can say that with Professor Teller as one of the Plowshare's leading friends, Plowshare doesn't need enemies. The Atomic Energy Fairy Tale has indeed many interesting prospects in store for U.S. citizens. As to Professor Teller's, quote, needless worry, unquote, who, me? The Lawrence Radiation Laboratory at Livermore is a strange and wondrous place. We have learned so much about how nuclear technologists think. One does have to admit that the laboratory is a bit remote, located as it is in the location of the Livermore Valley. So perhaps nuclear technologists there are at a disadvantage at trying to have their thinking in tune with the rest of humanity. Subtitle, Blow Up. In 1957, Professor E. B. Lewis published a very important concern, a very important paper concerning the radiation of leukemia by, I'm sorry, I'm going to start that sentence over, I apologize. In 1957, Professor E. B. Lewis published a very important paper concerning the production of leukemia by radiation in man. His scholarly considerations led him to suggest that there might be no safe dose of radiation and that every dose of radiation would produce its proportionate share of human leukemias. More radiation, more leukemias. And Professor Linus Pauling published similar predictions concerning cancer, leukemia, and genetic injury in human beings in proportion to the dose of radiation they received. Do you want to hear that again? I do. And Professor Linus Pauling published similar predictions concerning cancer, leukemia, and genetic injury in human beings in proportion to the dose of radiation they received. His calculations were sobering, to say the least, and the most disturbing, the most disturbing concerning the consequences of irrad irradiating large numbers of human beings. Anyone who has read Pauling's excellent book, No More War, let's take note of that one, No More War, must be, impre must be impressed with the depth in his considerations and his ability to predict the consequences to human beings of receiving nuclear radiation at a time when much of the direct human evidence was not yet in. But Professor Pauling has been decades ahead of others in so many important areas of science and medicine that there really is not much reason for surprise that his radiation predictions were so superb. Regrettably, the world seems determined to stay two decades behind Linus Pauling in his statement that there can be, quote, no more war, unquote. Events brought the issue into sharp, events brought the issues into sharp focus, the issues of real hazards of nuclear radiation to man. These events proved to be a turning point of major proportions in our understanding of the real reasons why, I am, why environmental catastrophe is upon us and why resolution of the crisis will prove so enormously difficult. Tamplin and his group had essentially completed the broad framework of prediction of where radioactivity would go following nuclear explosive detonations. The worst case expe expectations are now estimable. And from these data and a reasonable knowledge of how radioactivity of various sorts gets into man, it became possible to predict the radiation dose that he receives thereby. To be sure, minor features of wind patterns could change the amount of radioactivity in particular locations, but broadly, the task of predicting how many people would receive what burdens of radiation from no nuclear detonation was rapidly becoming a completed one. We turned our attention more and more to the issue of precisely what effects we would anticipate from atomic energy programs such as Plowshare and other AEC programs. 
We reviewed the work and predictions of Lewis, Pauling, and others concerning effects of cancer, leukemia, and genetic injuries. Additionally, an entirely new area of medical investigation, the study of chromosomes, had opened up in the period of 1960. And the chromosomes upon which the hereditary units, the genes, are disturbed, loomed as especially important potential targets for possible irreversible damage by ionizing radiation. Indeed, the developing data concerning radiation sensitivity of these all-important structures appeared quite ominous. We began to ask ourselves a serious question. Nuclear technologies begin to burgeon. Lewis, Pauling, Schubert, and others have raised grave questions of injury to human beings from radiation doses associated with the fallout from nuclear weapons testing. And here we were exploring the future of burgeoning technologies such as nuclear excavation of harbors, canals, stimulating natural gas production with nuclear explosives, aka fracking, nuclear reactors for electric power which were to begin ringing every major metropolitan center in the land, which they pretty much did, and radioisotope shipments which were finding their way into research laboratories, industries, and hospitals with an ever-increasing amount. All this was a proceeding apace, ready soon to skyrocket into application, set under a set of allowable doses prescribed by the Federal Radiation Council guidelines, many, many times higher than the doses of fallout that had led Pauling and others to have grave predictions of human misery and death. Indeed, the doses to be allowed to the population were some 20 times higher than those which had been worried about in the 1950s and which had led to Professor Pauling's grave concern for the welfare of human beings and irreversible pollution of the planet. Why were we not alarmed? I'm going to stop here. It's page 88, and I see I'm at 13 minutes, but 20 times higher. So it's the 90% rule from the very beginning, the 90% under report. I mean, what did they do recently? They raised the radiation limits exponentially. From It used to be what? They would warn the population when one person in 10,000 got cancer, when the levels were that high, and now it's when 1 in 26, or if I've heard 1 in 23. I think I read 1 in 26 on the actual legislation. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. 1 in 23 and 1 in 26 is just about the same thing, which means we're screwed means they're not going to tell us, which is why I think the net neutrality thing went along. They're rewriting history. They're just going to eliminate all this. When it all gets said and done, they'll just like, Meep. everything's gone. Sorry, guys. Hope you are you can make it. Well, you know what? People will be able to make it, and we'll do really well. And we'll, you know, this kind of stuff will stop when scientists lie, people die. So... How do you like my new sign? Ackerman gave me some little art tips. Actually, he suggested I paint in more bananas and make this look more like does not equal sign. So that's what I did. I used white out. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. We're just coming on to 15 minutes. Um, cheers. Put your courage feet on and, um, you know, we got to walk in integrity. And that they can't get to us if we walk in integrity. They can call us whatever they want, but... Guess what? Just like this book just said, genetic mutations. Ciao.